is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mylon Sword Podcast. Today on the podcast, we have a very we have two very special guests. We have the, of course, creators and the minds behind the Pirates Cave. Gentlemen, how are you guys doing today? Good, great, good. Yeah. Thanks great for having us. On. Yeah. I know. It's, awesome. it, it's been all it's been about a year since we last talked, but I mean I know throughout the throughout the year we, we still keep in contact and you know, we text each other to see how things are going. Just to keep up, just to keep us, just to keep our sanity sane until the next Halloween. Um, but you guys, so the, the the last year, it was our first time actually ever really hitting home haunts. And you guys were one of the first people that we got to experience. And I think that's what really turned my love for the, um, the home haunt scene because it really shows uh, a creative <laughs> standpoint with everybody. <laughs> With uh, with how you know, fans of Halloween and fans of the, the haunts, they want to design their own things. Clearly, we saw that with you guys of how you guys design this and how to bring this to life. What was uh, some of the highlights for you guys last year that was just uh, made it a, a really successful year for you guys? I think we had like a pretty successful year because we added like some really cool scenes on, and they were well received. Like we had we added the octopus scene in our garage. And everybody loved that. That was our that was everybody's highlight walking out. They're like, oh, that was octopus scene, dude. Like, that will always be in my memory. That scene, then we added the fire scene. And, and we had lots of media people come out, too, and record the haunt. And it, they recorded it. They wrote about it. And then just it really made it a memorable year for us. What about you? Yeah, I would say uh, the octopus scene. Because, you know, he had wanted to do the laser swamp, which was real popular two years ago. And I was like, ah, I don't want to do that this year. I don't want to spend the money on lasers. I was kind of pricing it. And it was expensive. It just kind of ran out of time. But, uh, you know, last year was the first year we, we made that happen. Took a lot of prep and then added the octopus to it. And it was really, like he says, the big hit. Everybody walked out there and, and 9 out of 10 people said the octopus was my favorite. Yeah. No, I, and I love that. <laughs> That specific effect is just an amazing effect. I mean, you see it at a lot of these major haunts, Hayride, uh, Not Scary Farm, obviously famous for doing it. So when you see, when I see that effect, it's one of my favorite effects. And when I saw that octopus scene, I remember we did the the behind the scenes. We were showing uh, showing how it was, you know, accomplished, and then walking through it and just seeing it in action. I think was one of my favorite scenes. I mean, I love the I love the the whole thing overall. I mean, from start to finish. It's just such a fun story to to listen and, and be involved in. I mean, obviously, you have the, the skeleton popping out of the chest telling you the story, one of my favorite things. And then going into the octopus scene, it was amazing. I mean, I love that effect and everything, uh, especially the, the whole laser thing. I mean, um, th I think that's a good investment for the future, obviously. I mean, you can always play around. If you want to make a new scene with that, you can always do that, and I think it's it was one of my favorites. And then I think another one of my favorite uh, moments was walking around the corner to the door scene and having the projection of the skeleton, which I thought was really well done. Um, and then, of course, the zombie um, pirate coming out, which I think was really cool. And then that finishing end, of course, with the whole ghillie suit and everything, I think that was – it just was a perfect end to a, a great maze. So you guys did a fantastic job last year, and I was just glad to be a part of it and – go through it yeah thank you i'm glad yeah. you loved it yeah, yeah. i mean and, and it's safe to say P sammy and i are a huge fan of pirates so i mean you know yeah. when you sign <laughs> the name pirates on it it's like oh we'll be there i mean we love pirates so it's like every time we go to disneyland pirates of the caribbean we have to get on it you know so yeah it's one of those things um so successful year last year uh we enjoyed it and we were thankful uh and grateful enough to actually get the the whole tour and everything um Going into this year, obviously, uh, you guys probably had something planned, but then, of course, with COVID coming around, it caused a lot of things to probably change in the in the process. So what was, of course, the most difficult decision coming up with this year's theme, uh, being that you guys probably went into the year having one thing planned, but then when COVID came further and further, you guys probably had a, okay, let's, let's cut back a little bit and let's see what else we can do and, and still make it a memorable experience for everyone this year. Because I think personally, back in March, when the whole COVID thing started, for us at least, we thought it wouldn't go all the way to Halloween. We thought it would be over by like summer, the beginning of summer. We, we didn't expect it going that long. So at first, we just thought like, oh, it's it'll be over before Halloween. So we'll just keep going with what we're doing. But then when it got around to like June, July, we like were like, dang, this thing's not 
moving away. We have to think of something new for this year. He's like, if not, we can't do a walkthrough. He's, COVID won't allow it. But it took a while. So I think it took about probably a good month or so to think of new ideas and just visualize what we're going to do. And it just comes gradually. Like, we'll start out with a big idea, like what we want to do. And we'll just, over time, we'll like, just get new ideas for it. Like we never really have a finalized vision until like maybe three weeks or two weeks before it's even done. Right. So like stuff changes all the time. Well, I wouldn't say that with this one, this one, we had to have our story written and edited, you know, a month and a half in advance, you know? So I don't know. I wouldn't say this one was last minute. Not at all. It's been very well planned out. Yeah. You know, because yeah. uh, there's a lot of new challenges with it, you know, uh, everything from, you know, we used to have like uh, four different controllers running every room. Right. And now it's like one controller running the whole six minute, actually 10 minute show, you know, that controls all the lights, the props, the smoke machines, uh, the projectors, you know, it's like everything. So it was uh, quite a different programming challenge. And we knew that going in. So he's like, we got to have this story nailed. And edited way in advance you know so but our, our video has been edited now for probably about two weeks right but even then the story changed around like we had a completely mm. like the same narrative but we had different people telling it like it changes still like i we went like mm. maybe two weeks into writing the story and then we're like mm. no we're gonna change it to this person telling the story mm. instead it, i agree that it didn't mm. change around as much this year but I think right. that it can still changed for like effects and story. Well, the event itself has very much changed, you know, because that yeah. was, it was a battle, you know, it, it got really real when, you know, and knots announced they're not opening. How many exactly. horror nights announced they're not opening. It's just like, well, wait a minute, you know, what are we going to do? You know? And we started waiting a little bit, seeing some other people started talking about yard displays. And I said, yeah, we can probably do that. You know? So <clears throat> ours is, I hate to call it a yard display because this would be so much more than that. You know, right, we've got right. uh, two video screens, you know, for a, a six minute long story that's narrated by a, a 3D animated uh, skull, you know, and uh, we're going to have actors come out and tell the story, you know, and then special effects and sound effects and other scares that were uh, socially distant scares, which is also the challenge, you know, yeah. you know, how do you do that? You know, right. so uh, a lot of, a lot of challenges. You know, but it was tough to finally decide that, you know, we're not going to do our traditional walkthrough. You know, we got to do something different and more distance, you know, so that was that was hard, but uh, a good challenge in, in itself as well. Definitely. And I think that's what, on a creative standpoint, really, like, I think that's what fans look forward to seeing is, okay, obviously this year is going to be a very different year for everyone. The world's still at a pandemic phase and everything. And the, always the biggest creative challenge is, okay, how can we still put something on and keep our haunt alive and, and keep doing it, keep our tradition going and still follow the, the COVID guidelines and everything. So I think for me, what I'm hearing just from behind the scenes, a whole projection show, I mean, I've always been fan. If you go to Disneyland, you know, they do a lot of those uh, with their shows, a lot of projections and stuff. So, you know, I, I, I'm personally a fan of projection shows. And I think, it, you know, with your guys's haunt and, and the whole storyline this year is entitled uh pirates cave origins which i think is going to be cool um obviously when you hear the name origins you think of the origin story of how everything started uh so i'm assuming this one we're gonna we're gonna dive deep into how everything began and we're gonna see the, the start of everything absolutely oh yeah um it we didn't even know the origins for like two weeks, two months ago. <laughs> we, we just made it up on a whiff. Like we just had to sit down and like, think like we thought about all the key elements we've had from the past years, the haunt, like right. the octopus, the chest, we had to think about all those different things, the fire, the fire and all that. Like we had to like integrate those into our story. How can we put these into our story and still make it interesting? So it was a challenge to write that and get it finalized and everything, but it was it was definitely a challenge, but I, I enjoyed doing it, and I think it's going to be really cool. Yeah, I liken it to probably what they went through 
riding the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie because they knew they had all these set pieces in the ride, right. you know, and then they had to try to figure out, well, how do we integrate all these different great scenes from the ride into this movie? You know, right. they did an excellent job. And so it's almost like writing a script backwards, you know, right. where you have all the visuals, but now you got to write the story, you yeah. know? <laughs> Yeah, that's a perfect way to put it. This is the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, and then them writing that first movie. It's like, how do you get all these great iconic scenes from this well-loved ride into a a film and and honor the honor the ride and honor where it's coming from and stuff. And I, I like the sound of that is taking some of your greatest moments of the the past years at the haunt and putting them into this show. Uh, you know, idolizing the past years and paying tribute and showing, of course, the origins of how it all began. Uh, I'm super stoked for this. I really am. What do you think uh, was obviously, um, you know, you're, you're doing a, a show with uh, scare actors. Uh, what do you think the hardest thing uh, between other than the distant scaring, what do you think the hardest thing is uh, chore choreographing all that? Like, I know you get to probably match it up and sync it up with the film. So will there be a, a nice rehearsal process going through? Have you guys already kind of started planning that out? W what's the whole uh, idea behind that? Okay, so um, we edited together our main video for both screens, right? And then once we finished, we like got generally done with the video. He edited together a little image of the front of our house with like what we usually have set up. So he put the screen over here on the left and the screen in the garage, and then we have little stick figures come out at certain times right. and act out what the um. The actors are supposed to do for this year helps us because it lets us know like the lighting too because we can say okay the light is red here or like a light is blue here the lightning turns on here this like it helps us and it helps the actors because it helps the actors to know where they need to be what they need to do and it helps us because when i'm programming the show it helps me to know okay i put that there and yeah so Definitely. forth yeah, it gives you all your timing, you yeah, know, timing. Of, of everything. We call it a puppet show puppet there you go. because it has the screens, but it has the little pirate figures doing their thing. So we will show our actors this puppet show. Yeah. Hey, you're pirate number one. So the little stick figure will have a number one on him, and he goes up and does this. And so, uh, you know, the challenge is a little bit different this year because our, our scare actors are used to kind of having their own little room, and, and they could kind of do something different every time if they wanted to. Right. But when they're – we're choreographing to a, a main story, a six minute long story, and they have got to hit their cues this year. They got to be in a certain spot at a certain time. They need to walk out at a certain speed. They got to make sure they got this one prop with them, you know, and they got to pick up this prop, you know, and uh, uh, I hope they're up for the challenge, you know, so uh, they, they all seem to be, you know, but we've been trying to let them know in advance that this is a little different, you know, yeah. you, you, you have a lot of specific direction. You know, at the end, they can kind of, uh, do their own thing you know there's some flexibility at the very end but uh you know the whole show portion they gotta be on the ball yeah yeah right no and i and i've i've kind of gotten to see that a little bit with uh, los angeles haunted hayride you know how they do the whole projection and they have their scare actors walking around they gotta be on cue on something so yeah i i could see where you guys are coming from with all that i mean it's all it's all about the timing uh on that note what is uh is there going to be multiple shows per night or how's that going to work out uh, as far as your nights go? So we have a, it's a 10 minute show. The individual show is 10 minutes and it will run repeatedly on loop from seven to 10 on all of our nights, which is 23rd, 24th, 25th, 30th, 31st and November 1st for 2020. Right. So it will loop all night. And um, yeah, so you can come at any time of the night uh, from when we're open and just watch the show. And, yeah. Yep. It's going to be fun. I like that. It's, uh, it's, it's something new in the haunt scene, which I like. And it's, I like to see the creative challenge it puts on um, creators such as yourselves because it, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, you love these people so much and you want them to continue to doing something. So how are they going to do something next? Boom. They're going to do – it's – the way I like describing it is a yard display slash uh, theatrical show in a way. I like, I, I mean, I love theatrics. I really do. And I was in, I was in theater in high school, and I used to love doing behind the scenes, uh, working with other departments to see how do you light a scene, how do you 
sound a scene perfectly? How do you cue in everything? Um, and I think it, it's just something that I'm always interested in. So the fact that you guys are making almost like a theatrical experience, or like a live theater thing is honestly, I'm, I'm super stoked for, I really am because I cannot get enough of my theatrics. I love going to see theater like Phantom of the Opera, Wicked, you know, I liked seeing all that stuff. So the fact that you guys are doing something similar with, of course, uh, a movie, a little mini movie, like for 10 minutes long and everything, I think it's going to be cool. And, I, and I'm super stoked. And I hope people go out and see this because you guys are carrying on the legacy. You guys, as I keep saying, you guys are keeping Halloween alive. And I think that's the most important part. People just want to go out and still celebrate and do something for the Halloween season. And you guys are helping uh, bring that to life. And I can't say this enough. But thank you guys for doing so because we were scared that we weren't going to have nothing this season. So, <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. just, it's just been awesome to see you guys come up with something to, for people to enjoy. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. I think there's going to be a big hunger for anything Halloween, you know, because right. the big guns are all shut down, you know. And it's only like you said, it's, uh, it's uh, the home haunts year, you yeah. know, because they got a little more flexibility. It's like the state, I'm hoping – isn't going to come crack down on us, you know, right. and uh, they'll be supportive. And, and uh, it's interesting to see what people are going to think of it, you know, because, you know, we haven't done this before. We haven't written a, a six minute long story before that involves actors. And we've been bringing people in and having them watch it. Now, is it, is it too long? Is it, is it, is it holding your interest? Right. You know, it's like we're questioning ourselves, you know, but I think we've put together a, a good little story and then there's a great aspects of it with it to the actors are going to add to and the special effects and then other scares you know that are going to work out and time just right so we're excited you actually answered one of our fan questions that we got today which was what would it be like for the actors this year at, at the haunt and obviously you, you went into detail about them having to choreograph along with uh lighting and, and the video in itself so obviously and then also be some social distant uh scaring which also approaches the challenge this year um, so, I mean, it was good to hear that. I mean, I think a lot of people's biggest thing too is, you know, how are they going to social distance it in COVID? Cause you know, I think there's still people out there that want to do stuff, but they're still on the little bit on the scared side because of COVID. But from what I'm hearing, you guys have, you know, you guys have your plan down. You guys are making it safe for, this sounds like something the entire family can come out and enjoy. Uh, you know, even after dark, I mean, it's something that the family can come out, look at the, the you know cool effects, and watch the little um, the film with it. And it's something that children of all ages, people of all ages, can just come out and have a good time and enjoy, which I love hearing. Um, so I'm super stoked for that. I mean, I think I might even bring out my sister and everybody to come see something because I know she's pretty bored this season. So you know, I was like, let's go do some stuff. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're still recommending age ten to up because there's a few scenes where. You know, someone gets shot and, you know, <laughs> uh, someone gets stuffed into a treasure chest, you know. Right. So there's, there's a little little bit of violence in it, you know, but right. uh, it's interesting to see. Uh, he's, he's getting mad at me because I'm spoiling <laughs> You know, uh, interesting to see what some of the parents think, you know, about it. You know, because as you know, we're a, we're a family-friendly haunt, you know. Yeah. But uh, there's a little, few things that push the envelope just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, and, and and I love that last year, too, you guys actually uh, do a thing an hour prior to actually opening the haunt with characters and everything. You get to let the kids walk through and enjoy it and see all the set pieces, I think, is a really nice thing to do. I mean, I know a lot of kids probably want to go into it, but they're too scared. So I, I think the opportunity of them getting the opportunity to go through and look at the set pieces, I think, is cool. Because I know a lot of kids at, you know, young age have big imagination so when they see this kind of stuff they just lose their minds well, they do there's there's a lot of interest in that we were so surprised we did that for the first time two years ago right and we just kind of wrote it on our sign like come early you know come a uh, half hour early and the kids can walk through and that's all we did really and right. somehow the word got out with all these parents and then just huge. had a huge line of of kids it's like where did all these people come from you right. know and like i said there's that hunger for and their kids want to see it, but they don't want to get scared, you know? So, and that was perfect. We just had them walk through. There were no monsters. And there was one scare, though. They could, And we told them that at the beginning. You can hit the red button, and there's one scare. It's up to you. And yeah. the most entertaining part was 
uh, the kids would be saying, or the, the parents would be saying, let's touch the red button. Come on. The kid would be, no, 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 don't touch that red button. And they would be arguing back and forth, you know, and it was, uh, so much fun to see that, you know? So that was a challenge this year. It's like, well, there's no walkthrough. Right. We can definitely see the decorations, but we've got this uh, idea. Can I share that? You know, <laughs> I don't know. You know. Well, you know, it's, it's for the kids and stuff like that. But uh, you know, we have our pirate in the chest, you know, we're going to, um, have one night and the kids can come if they bring a costume they can get some candy but they have to knock on the treasure chest that's going to open up and they'll be able to talk to our, our pirate so we'll awesome. have a microphone hooked up and uh and and uh, interact with the kids and stuff and then they'll get some candy so that's a, we just came up with that like a week ago because we were like bum we just like we don't have anything for the kids this year you know so i love that idea i mean yeah there's still kids out there who have wild imaginations and they want to see this stuff, but obviously we'll get too scared sometimes depending on the kid. I mean, there's some kids I've seen at like five years old that will walk through it and just laugh and have the time of their lives. <laughs> um, but for most kids, I mean, I think stuff like that interactivity kids love that stuff. I mean, they love talking to somebody if they're getting candy and talking to somebody like they'll just be so hooked on, on the skeleton the entire time that's talking to them. Um, I, I think that's an, an amazing idea, and I and I I'm gonna actually have to come out just to see that. I mean, because oh, yeah. I, I think that would be something that is, you know, potentially can be something for the future for you guys too. I mean, you know, you can do a whole night where you do bring that out again after you know. Yeah. If this works well, out good, you can bring it back. If you want any candy though, you gotta come in costume, all right? All right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I'll dress up as the uh, I'll dress up as uh, Thanos from Infinity War. He's one of my favorites. <laughs> I'll the gauntlet and everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, I got another question here from actually one of our own, Rob. Uh, he wants to know actually uh, for the haunt overall. Uh, where do you where do you where did they or where did you guys get the ideas from and what inspired them mostly? For people that don't know. Well, you do because you didn't want to start it. So. Yeah, you know I've been I've been building haunts ever since I was like, I don't know, like, you know, 10 years old, probably. But when we moved into this house, uh, I was just the, the original, the first year was just me in the front yard with a mask and a shovel, you know, and it's just grown from there, obviously. But uh, one day, my wife brought back from the thrift store, this pirate wheel, you know, right. uh, and that was just the wheel, right. And I, I thought, that's cool. You know, I bet you we could build that whole prop of the skeleton steering the pirate wheel like we see in the pirates caribbean so i took it on as a challenge we already had a skeleton you know so we dressed him up like a pirate put his hands on the wheel put a little motor on it and we liked it so much and we were just thinking you know that's a good theme you know because it's a good family friendly theme but it can be made scary yeah you know and it's it's what you know it's a appreciated theme and people love it you know so we just kind of kept building on from there and getting more props and stuff and it's kind of stuck you know and you know, I, I'm just, I'm overwhelmed that some of these people like Rotten Apple that do a different theme entirely every year, it's like, holy smoke, I can't imagine how much work that would be, you know, it's, it's enough work just doing our haunt and then trying to prove certain scenes, but to, just to redo the theme, I don't think I could ever handle that, you know, so <laughs> it's like, you know, we're sticking with pirates and just trying to make it better every year. Right. My inspiration personally came from him is when I was little, I just grew up watching him build it every year. And I would get on a mask and I would just go out there and scare. And then over every year since, I've just started to help out more and more because I've seen his passion for it. Right. So I just began to help more and more. And this year I've I programmed the show and I made our announcement trailer and I helped write the story with him. So we're catching up now, we're neck and neck. <laughs> yeah, he's programming he's programming all the dmx lights you know and uh doing all the social media marketing i'm really proud of him just he's really stepped up his game you know because i've always secretly told myself it's like you know if, if these kids don't get involved at least one of them help me out i don't know how long i can keep doing this you know right. so it's been, been nice to have him such a but such a big help amazing right the great father and son duo i love it it's 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 an amazing team you guys obviously prove it every year putting on a, a very successful haunt. Um, yeah, like I said, I mean, when we first uh, heard about this, it was actually through uh, my Nino, uh, my uncle. Um, and he, he referred us to each other, and uh, the rest was history from there. I, and I, the minute I told Sammy, hey, 
I got, uh, we got asked to come down to a pirates themed haunt. He goes, say no more. We're going. I was like, <laughs> I'm, glad too. I'm glad you're on board. So <laughs> and he was like, uh, you, you got a haunt and pirates as much as I'm getting into haunts this season and you're putting pirates in it. Say no more. We're going. I was like, yeah, I'm glad you're on board. Cause if you weren't, you didn't have a choice. You were coming regardless. We were doing this. Um, but he, you know, Sammy is someone that, um, this was the first, last year was the first year him getting really involved in haunts, and we got to really explore that, and I'm glad we really got to explore your guys' haunt, and it really is, honestly, a, a memorable thing for me last year, and so I'm just very happy you guys are doing something this year. You guys are keeping the traditions going for the for fun for the whole family, and then, of course, the show. Obviously, they recommend ages 10 and up, so... Um, Go out and yeah. support them, and it's I, I and I can't wait for you guys. But before uh, we really come to a final say so in things, I understand you brought something special for the audience and myself. Yeah, we did. In fact, we did. Um, yeah, I can. Do you want me to screen share it to everybody? You could screen share it, and then obviously, uh, you. I know you're gonna send me a copy of this, so you guys will get to see a full on. Uh, HD version of it, so you, you know that way you guys get a good look at what he's doing. But this is an exclusive sneak peek at what you can experience this year at Pirates Cave Origins. Psst, avast there! Ye come seeking the origins of the Pirates Cave, eh? <laughs> well, you've come to the proper place. The tale you're about to be told is not. For the faint of heart. <laughs> I am so stoked for that. I really am. That was dope. I like that. <laughs> that was really cool. That's our storyteller right yeah, there. That's our narrator. He tells our origin story. I... I am absolutely in love with it. I really am. I cannot. Now you got me even more pumped. Um, and October just started today. Now I got to wait till the 23rd to see the entire story. But ladies and gentlemen, my guest today, the creative minds behind the Pirates Cave, they will be opening October 23rd. And they will be operating the 23rd through the 25th and the 30th through, the, uh, no, through November 1st. Now the time is 7 to 10 p.m. on those select dates. And the event Get this, people. The event is free, so you can go enjoy it. Bring friends, bring the family. Obviously, wear your mask, stay social distant, but have a fun time because I can tell you this, Pirate Cage Origins is going to blow your socks off. It's going to be a fun time. <laughs> I cannot wait. Just seen the video. I'm stoked for it. I love the animation on it. It, it looks awesome. Gentlemen. <laughs> I hope you guys are ready for a, a, a fun-filled season, man, because I have a feeling a lot of people are going to come check this one out, and I cannot wait myself to go check it out. We hope so. Yeah. Can't wait to see you there. Yeah, yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, go follow Pirates Cave on uh, all social media. What's your guys' social media so everyone can go f uh, check you out and see more details on it? Uh, we are on Link Linktree, which is actually this link you're going to see right about now, and that takes you to all of our links, uh, our website, our Facebook, our Twitter, our Instagram. And you can check out all of those sites with just one link. So check that out. Scan the code, and you can see all of our sites. Definitely. You're not going to want to miss out of what they're bringing this season and every other season beyond this one because I can guarantee you, you won't be disappointed when you go see their haunt. So go ahead and give them a follow. Visit their website. Also, I know they have a donation page. They work really hard on these events. So if you guys have the few bucks to spare, um, they would be very grateful, and they would appreciate it. But nonetheless, always just go see their stuff they're always just w loving fans to come out and see their stuff so definitely go check out pirates cave origins starting october 23rd 2020 oh, and i also uh, mention our two sponsors you know we have jeffrey simons oh, yeah. who's a real estate agent he's been with us for three years now sponsoring right. the haunt and then uh pam dunn from mulberry street mortgage is our second year right. and they are so essential in helping us uh pay for this monster you know there you so, go I just wanted to mention them as well. Yeah. So shout out to the sponsors, man, because you guys <laughs> are a huge help in helping us build them for them too. So thank you guys to everyone, and we hope you guys enjoyed.